Hi everyone and welcome back to the Peterson Odyssey. I'm Daryl and this is Megan. Hello. And uh, this on our channel here we have two things that we focus on. Number one is travel. We're all about travel. And in, this year we're going to be embarking on a second part of a travel related thing which is converting a 2021 Volkswagen Crafter into a camper van. Right, and this uh, video is going to be about our decisions really on what we've chosen, what we're going to purchase, how we're going to purchase and why we've purchased it. It's really interesting I think we've seen lots of videos like this but given that we're from New Zealand you may be able to pick that up from our accents and some people consider New Zealand to be the bottom of the world we think it's right smack back in the middle <laughs> to be honest um, but one of the things that's really tricky I suppose being an island nation that's not on a main shipping route in a COVID pandemic how we've gone about finding the things that we need and the kind of the hoops we've had to jump through on occasion to get there. We didn't take the decision to convert a van really lightly, we considered our options and if you're interested in the decision making that we've gone through for why we're choosing to convert a van rather than buy a motorhome and the other kind of design features and things that we've considered along the way, we'll put the link to a playlist up there and also make sure it's in the description. Step one in figuring out what to buy is doing some research and doing some planning. In fact, we probably went over it and over it and over and over it and over again, uh, just to ensure, first of all, we're on the same wavelength, because uh, sometimes, well, a little bit, we, we aren't, but a lot, once once we get it, yeah, we're, uh, we're on. So when Daryl says we did a lot of it, we did a lot of YouTube watching. Thankfully, that happened to be when we were in lockdown, it started there, so there was a good amount of trying to get our day work done and then rewarding ourselves during lockdown with lots of YouTube watching. We watched people's van conversions. We watched in-depth, detailed uh, electrical installation videos. We watched videos of people traveling around in their van, obviously old videos, <laughs> uh, just to see how they, what they did and how they liked it. And to be honest, it got to the point where we were watching so many videos, it was hard to keep things straight. Yeah, and almost to a point, it was like, I think we've watched them all. <laughs> what I started doing during this research phase was watching YouTube videos and taking notes on my phone of features that I thought would really work for us. Uh, this was particularly useful if I was watching a video that Daryl wasn't watching, but they had that one little mm. innovative feature that you think, oh, yes. that works for us, or that might work for us. So I had this crazy long list on my phone, which actually ended up with some contradictory things, like did we want the bed in traverse across the back of the van, or did we want some kind of Murphy bed, but just almost taking note of what the types of things that people were doing, so that we could start to make some informed decisions. I have Pinterest pinned a lot of stuff. Um, no matter what I'm doing on Pinterest, it just gives me van life content now. But it just was a case of, again, of trying to curate our thoughts because mm. we thought we'd seen it all, but it was just making sure that we're being selective so we could find the resources that we wanted. I would like to also just give a shout out really quickly to the Vanual. Um, I was put a link to it in the description. It's, I, um, to be honest, I'm not even sure who the people who made it, but it is a step-by-step -step van conversion guide. It's, it's beautifully laid out. It tells you what, what you need to do, like including the materials that you need, the tools that you need for each step along your van conversion. We are going to be clinging to this one, kind of like a guided Bible. Well, a few years ago, I just came up with this crazy idea to travel from uh, Singapore to London uh, without a plane. Well, what would happen rather than living out of a suitcase? What if we could mm. take the van? Or a backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the van, which is a bit bigger than a backpack, mm. and ship it offshore and then be guaranteed to have our transportation and our accommodation sorted. Mm. With that in mind, it does mean that we are building what will be predominantly used as a weekend, a short trip van, mm. but we also want to be able to have it as our home for a period of time. Okay, so if you're gonna take any advice from us, don't buy anything until you're sure of your plans and more importantly, your desires for how you're gonna live in your van. Yeah, we've been very lucky. We're, we have had a very, very long- Too long. Uh, yeah, run into when we're actually gonna get the van. So we've tried to use this uh, time very, very wisely. Uh, and, it, and it's helped us look around um, and 
finding the right prices for stuff and when we find the, the right price for the item that we've been looking for, then buy it then. Daryl's point so important there. We looked around. We looked around by going to visit local New Zealand shops. So uh, Mitre 10, Bunnings, RV Supercentre. Oh, I don't even know where else we've been. Tara Rubber. I like to try some stuff out. I want to touch it, see it. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm also a massive online shopper. So there was a lot of what's available to us here in Auckland, but also understanding, particularly a niche market, we don't know much about specialist stuff like 12 volt electricity. Um, you know, compostable toilets, you know, actually really trying to figure out where um, where the locals would do that. Yeah. The second part of our researching and exploring of, you know, where suppliers are, is we did a lot of searching of stuff offshore. From all the YouTube watching, we understood where people bought stuff from. Mm. And um, the word I heard, particularly in the Northern American, you know, Canadian and Amazon. US, Amazon. Amazon, 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 Amazon. Mm. We have created a wish list on Amazon where we keep track of um, the things that we want to buy and then I will make sure, you know, seeing their availability. Mm. Sometimes things are available that don't ship to New Zealand. Sometimes the shipping can change a lot and obviously we're also dealing with um, uh, currency fluctuation as well. I've kind of found that in New Zealand, unfortunately, it, uh, it feels like as soon as you put like RV or camper van in front of something, it's like straight away you're adding 15, 20% on what it really should cost. Unfortunately, it does seem a little bit of price mm -hmm. gouging, which I guess in a way it's been good being able to look at Amazon offshore and see what the general price for it should be. I've had a, a New Zealand distributor give me a price and I've gone back to them asking if they could go back uh, and fine tune it and thankfully they'll be able to. So one of the things during this research phase and is you, you've got to really use this time of digging into these products to figure out what's the budget. Like there's a difference between what do I think the budget is, mm. what's the appropriate range for this item and how much am I prepared to pay. So I know how much uh, a domestic fridge would cost. I had no idea how much an yeah. RV 12 volt, to, you know, three way fridge or whatever those things are would cost. So yeah, so all this time that we've had, we've been able to look at our budget and see what we need uh, and, and are very, very important to us. Uh, and where, you know, the budget can, the strings can be loosened a bit. And then stuff that not quite as important uh, where we can kind of tighten those strings up and, and try and feed that money into what we want. So, you know, I guess like with most people, uh, sleep is very important. Mm. So I guess a bed, a mattress. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's not just it's very important, but there's a difference between we're going away for a week, we can handle a not great mattress because then we'll come back to our house versus this is going to be our home. Mm. We're not yet spring chicks. <laughs> having, having a really good mattress feels important. So that's an area that we're going to invest in. Yeah. Uh, so an electricity, set up uh, mm. was another thing where I wanted to make sure I had the, the T's crossed and the I's dotted um, and we could survive off grid. Not just survive, we could do things like, Daryl loves gaming, we're going to have a PlayStation set up in the van. I um, am planning on being able to work in time in the van so I want to make sure that I can have a hair dryer that I can use. So I've got a Dyson air wrap <laughs> that takes a lot of draw on electricity. So we want to be able to make sure that that or its equivalent can be used. That, you know, being able to run out an espresso is really important to me. I don't want to have to, you know, I don't know, grind the gears by hand and boil up pots of water. I just, there are some things that doesn't work for everyone in van life but it will work for us is we don't actually want to compromise too much because this is going to be our home and we want to live in it in a way that makes sense to us. So conversely the areas where we think we might scrimp and save to justify the expense in some of those area, other areas um, Sometimes it's about brand names. So for example, um, in our YouTube research, there was lots of talk of Vitrofrigo, Dometic fridges. I know Dometic fridges, um, fridge freezers even, are uh, top of the line. We know what size we wanted. We've had a look at them. Mm. But, but we haven't actually purchased a Dometic. Instead, we've purchased a 
um, local brand from a place called Vantage RV here in New Zealand and it's their brand it's a, it's a 110 litre fridge it's got a nine litre freezer mm. and it seems to be exactly what we want it just doesn't have that little label mm. and so that has saved oh hundreds of dollars start buying stuff um, buying stuff has always been one of my hobbies. I love shopping. This is a type of shopping I never thought I'd end up doing, but I just want to talk about some of the specific retailers that we've bought things from here in New Zealand. So Vantage RV, uh, they're based just up in Silverdale in north of Auckland, and they have an online shop as well. And from there we bought our refrigerator, and we also managed to find our Max Air fans, mm. two of the Max Air fans from there. Another item, I found a Sirocco gimbal um fan as well uh it was an end of line uh, at a new zealand company uh unfortunately though there was the last one i kind of in my mind uh, thought about having two uh, but well, we can buy one. the other one save on one splurge on the other you never know one might actually be enough so rv world is based out of nelson we've bought our electric hot water heater system from it's the only electric hot water heater i could find honestly in the universe because i've looked everywhere uh, that, yeah that's 240 volt that's 240 volt we've bought some things at noel lemmings we just happened to and farmers we've just found a few deals a convection microwave and again by knowing what we we're prepared to pay mm. for it just in the january sales we found it for 200 dollars off. i found the local distributor that does uh, victron the this business was called uh, powerbox we would recommend them Shout out to Powerbox if anyone from there watches it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ordering directly from Amazon. Um, one of our very first purchases, just because I liked the look of it and I didn't want it to sell out, was an RV specific tap or faucet if you're that way inclined for the kitchen. And then just the other day, we had the RV specific um, shower head <laughs> turn up. All right, it's a new package. Whoa, it's tiny. The size of. <laughs> and this is a case of pictures being deceiving. I really need a scale because it was not the size I thought it was going to be. In cases where items, the suppliers over in generally the States uh, don't ship to New Zealand, uh, we've found two uh, mm. businesses in the States or, or have affiliates or are affiliates of New Zealand companies and then they will ship it uh, on our behalf to New Zealand. Uh, my US, uh, and then there's the New Zealand Post uh, affiliate called U Shop. So these people have had the most random things turning up. <laughs> Batteries. Um, what else have we bought through them? Uh, so end up going through uh, my US, which about a month after we got it, um, Moonshade. Uh, we, oh, yeah. we we got that through, uh, got that shipped through my US, uh, but now Moonshade um, shipped directly to New Zealand. So yeah that's right there's a problem with being a bit too organized yeah yeah uh, and the other one was um uh, batteries for for our van finding lithium batteries in new zealand was a little bit of a challenge mm. um and obviously i guess we kind of got sucked into a, a bit of watching too much youtube and everyone was using battleborn 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 that's sometimes a, at one point it is almost like uh the YouTube algorithm had been listening to us too much and um, and it just kept uh, reinforcing that. So we've made it seem like, oh, we could just buy stuff and it was super easy. It kind of was and it wasn't. One of the ways in which it wasn't is we, again, the YouTube thing and blogs and particularly um, Pinterest as well, fell in love with two style of windows that people seem to be putting in their Mercedes Sprinters. And Mercedes Sprinters and Volkswagen Crafters used to be really, really similar. And so the two styles of windows that we really liked were motion windows that had the sliding T at the bottom and CR Lawrence windows that had an opening T, a T vent at the bottom. So we contacted both those companies. CR Lawrence took a while to get back to us. We tried their Australian distributor, you know, tried the US one. Eventually, after several emails and a phone call, I think, even from me, um, we got someone to come back and say, we don't do that then. And then when we got in touch with Motion Windows, they said, oh, we don't have any in stock for your van, but just pop up to Washington State and we'll take care of it. So when I said we're in New Zealand, obviously that one was... 
when I looked at what what are the windows for sale in Germany for the Volkswagen Crafter camper vans, like what can we find? And they just didn't or the have, UK, yeah. yeah, they just didn't have that T vent, the ability to be able to have air flowing through the van without the whole window being open, which reduces the safety and security of your van. So Daryl then did some local research. Found a company called uh, L E L U Tech, uh, and they pretty much do custom um, aluminium fittings. Uh, for marine um, horse floats, camper vans. Mm. Um, based here in Auckland. Yeah, based here in Auckland uh, in, in South Auckland. I did have one issue though where um, I found a clip on YouTube about uh, a US uh, solar energy distributing company. Uh, so, okay, that looks, looks exciting, look pretty good. I found them online. Uh, uh, found Battleborn batteries uh, and uh, then scrolling through the, the shipping side of things once I got it into the um, into the cart and to check out yep though it looks like yes they're going to ship to New Zealand as well and you know paid through uh, through PayPal uh, until you know and then I get a little scratch in the back of my head and I'm going I got a feeling this isn't going to work <laughs> And would you believe it, about two days later, I get this email from uh, from the company saying that, no, they don't ship to New Zealand and they will refund us. That's why I had no concern. But then PayPal, uh, converting it back to New Zealand dollars, they decided to uh, clip the ticket twice, I guess, as you could say. For the second time, I'm following up uh, about the 21st of, of October. The, the, the supplier has refunded me the... That's not the problem. Yeah, the problem is, is with PayPal. Mm -hmm. Yep. The difference is, is that I've given PayPal $275 and I've got nothing in return from it. So I think I think our main message when it comes to purchasing is you've got to shop around but, and you have to have kind of a, an eye on the prize at any point in time unless you have the financial means just to go and buy it all at once. We've staggered all these purchases. We've spent, you know, couple of thousand dollars already um but we've stayed at over several months so it is very achievable for us mm. just to chip away chip away um make strategic decisions about what we're buying when particularly those big offshore expensive item or and or expensive items and then some of the other ones that are just kind of more opportunistic but one of the things that we have to be very good at particularly with the busyness of our work lives and our family life is talking to each other about what we've done <laughs> um it just it, it, i feel like it's a given but there is a risk, I think, if you're not organized and on the same page that you're going to waste money. We have used Google Docs to help us stay super organized and make sure we're on the same page. We've got a Google Sheet that has every phase of our bill, the products that we need, as well as research that we've done about how much things cost. And then when we buy something, we just make sure we are figuring out if we're buying over what our initial estimate was going to be or under. So I kind of keep an eye on the whole big picture and Daryl has um, a much more straightforward way of actually managing managing things as they're coming in and out of the house. Yeah, so what I just managed to do is just something quick and easy just like this. So I've just kind of written down a list of things we need and I think as we order them we put little dots and when they're physically here we just uh, cross through them. Um, so yeah, nice and ready there. It really does help us just be super organized and make sure that we're not going to hit the van build with some big thing missing that's going to delay us. This will be our last video of uh, our van prep series. Uh, next you'll probably see of us is us collecting the van from the dealership. Uh, not too long now. Uh, so please, please, if you want to uh, be with us and enjoy the, our journey uh, as we start building the van, um, please like and subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll see you along the way.